Can you believe it? It's part five. You're still painting along. If you're on part five and you're still watching, you are a great watercolor artist. That's all I have to say. You're putting in the time and the effort and it's going to pay off. We're looking now at part five. Um, all through the series, we looked at this painting and we basically started off with a light pencil drawing, part one, part two. We did the uh, ink, Sumi ink, with our ink pen, ink pens. Let that dry 100% complete, completely. Then we did our Skywatch, uh, Skywatch. Part uh, four, we just completed. We did our pretty much the the majority of our watercolor washes on our buildings, our bed and breakfast. We're calling this in our little area of uh, buildings on the left hand side here. So now let's finish up. This will be um, the final part, part five. Let's key in on a key, a couple key things as we're looking at this, and we're saying, all right, we're dealing with now doing. Um, the uh, the greens in the picture that the trees the bushes along here and along the sides and then along the the uh, foreground so along this foreground and in these bushes and in these distant areas and over here on the left we're dealing with some greens now with greens <clears throat> you'll hear a lot of artists talk about greens like watercolor artists that you might see on YouTube and so forth some say um, you know be careful with greens maybe don't don't use greens out of the tubes. Just try to mix greens with yellows and blues and so forth. And that's a good good idea to do. I do use greens, as you can see on my palette here. I use um, sap green, olive green, and uh, chromium of oxide. And also viridian green. But in this case, uh, I, I'm going to use my greens, but I'm going to mix them with the same colors we've been using along here. So let's say, since we're going to put some greens in here, before I put the greens in though, let's do the roof on the left over here. So that's some uh, mineral violet, which is purple. Okay, so we block that in. And Okay, let's do the distant. Um, so the distant color of the trees we can say are, is going to be mineral violet, maybe some cobalt blue, and let's put a little bit of the the light red in there or burnt umber or raw sienna, a little bit of the warm mixture. So let's not make the blue bluish purple too. And then I'll go with some cobalt, some cerulean. And I'll add a little bit of sap green in there just to, so we get that, that feeling of the, uh, that that's green, that's the forest back here. And we'll use that same mixture over here with a little bit of the blue. Give it that little bit of a distance feel. And then we're going to go in with more of a, um, now we can go in with more of a definite green, which is closer to the foreground here. So now we're burnt umber and sap green. And the same thing over here, um, burnt, burnt umber and burnt umber and sap green. And again, I'm just you know loosely putting this in here, not going too fussy. And then maybe let's add a little bit of Payne's gray into that green. So Payne's gray into the sap green and burnt umber and then a touch of Payne's gray into that and then we'll take our brush our square brush and then we'll just maybe put some 
some feelings of uh, foliage up here. And over here, maybe two. There we go. Maybe some here too. And let's. Uh, I want to make sure I just kind of impress that we we should add a little bit of um, a couple of like twigs and things just over here to give it the feeling that it's uh, some trees and some uh, leaves and things on the left, on the right hand side. And then since we have that same mixture going, let's just stick with that and then just add some some more um, brighter green. So we'll add a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit of earth colors as well. And you can see I'm having a fun time here. I'm not getting too fussy with things. Um, I'm using the same colors from my palette. You'll notice I broke away from my normal routine of uh, keeping the palette completely clean at all times. But on a painting like this, the painting is somewhat small. So I haven't mixed a whole lot of paint really. So I can leave everything right on my palette so that all my paints are harmonized together on the painting itself, which is a key. You want to kind of keep using the same colors over and over in your painting. Sap green. And that'll kind of that sap green will sort of mix in will mix in and mingle with the other paint to make it a little more mellow and uh, a little couple of splashes here and there Just going to keep going along here. Mixing in some colors. And then the last thing I'll do is a little more cerulean blue. Cerulean blue with a little bit of the um, sky color. And that's pretty much everything is now sort of all tied together. Everything is looking pretty, pretty good. I think this is, uh, this is fine. We accomplished our main, our main objective here was uh, line and wash, making sure that we let that um, black ink Sumi ink dry completely 100% before we started putting our watercolor washes over. So if, the, if you can take away three things from this, the main three things are one, a light preliminary uh, sketch with like a, you know, lead pencil, regular, you know, regular school pencil or, you know, mechanical pencil. So we have, um, we have the preliminary sketch with a regular pencil, very light of our scene. Second, we do our um, water, uh, our sumi ink line work, doing all the darkest darks of the shadows underneath the eaves of the roof and the rakes uh, of the roof and the windows, some fence posts and so forth. Then 
after that ink is completely 100% dry, you can use a blow dryer or you can just let it sit for a couple hours or you just keep an eye on it, make sure you test it, make sure it's completely 100% dry, the ink. Then you can do your sky wash, put that in. And then once you have your sky wash in, you keep your sky wash in your palette so that you can use those colors to sort of mix in with the other colors as you go through and do the rest of your um, colors of your roofs and your walls of your buildings and so forth. So as long as you keep mixing and harmonizing your colors, um, which would be, you know, leaving them on your palette as you work. So we use the top and the bottom of the palette. Um, you'll get a good pleasing uh, effect of uh, the colors looking like they all match or mingle or harmonize together in your painting. And then you have your beautiful effect of the nice uh, dark, dark tonal values of the black ink. And uh, you should have no problem with this. And I would say if you're, um, if you want to just test out, you know, how this works for you, you can always take one section of this and, and sort of just do one section at a time. So you might um, take one section, I'll zoom in just a little bit. So maybe you can take one section. I'll, I'll kind of move this. So maybe you can break this painting down into smaller sections if you want. That sometimes makes it a little easier. So you can put maybe just a small section of the right hand cottage on the right there in your picture and then just do the one on the left as well. Or even um, even just doing this one section first. So if I zoom in like this, so if you, so you can always kind of break things down into smaller parts first. So maybe you might do this first, then try this second, this section, second. So you might be able to do that second. And then the third try, you go and you do both of them together in the same painting like that like we did here. So it's up to you. I find that breaking things down into smaller parts definitely is very helpful because um, you, when you do that, it's sort of, it, um, like let's say you wanted to make this painting for your house and you wanted to frame it and put it in your house somewhere. Um, you know, if you practice the left hand building first, practice the right hand building second, a few times each, and then when you do your final painting, you do both together. And by that time, you've already done each of these a couple times. And then your larger painting is going to come out a lot easier because you've already practiced these two sections a couple times. And then it'll flow a lot better. And um, you can simplify the colors a little more. I kind of did a lot of mixing with, with grays and so forth, you know, mixing like letting things mix and mingle. Sometimes it doesn't always work out 100% of the time. Sometimes I know I'll mix colors and they don't look always that great once the painting dries, but for the most part, if it looks good in the palette and you're using the same colors over and over, you'll, you'll tend to get a pretty nice, you know, um, pleasant, uh, pleasing watercolor wash. Um, I think this mixing and mingling of colors um, is way more um, preferable to trying to just use like one or two colors like if I guess the way I can explain it is if if we were just to go in and do our painting and just say like do the sky blue and then you know do the buildings do the buildings in the light red and then just and then just take a green and then just do the bushes in the green like that so if we just use like three colors you know, that's going to look very like, you know, probably pretty boring. So if we add those mixtures and we kind of mix and mingle the colors a little more, then we kind of have a much more uh, pleasant looking painting where there's more variations in there. So mixing colors is fun. Have fun with it. Enjoy. Um, again, uh, it's just a matter of um, your style. If you don't really like this style too much, um, you know, of course, you wouldn't really practice it all that much and uh, so forth. But but I thought I'd just take a little break away from normal um, the normal uh, routine that we do and try to do something a little different with the line and wash. Hope you liked it and we'll see you on the next one.